What's up, Money Minds, and welcome back to another video edition of Market Briefs. Today is November 19th, and here's some business and financial news you can finally use. Ford is teaming up with Global Foundries in order to help end our global chip shortage, or to at least help relieve some of the stress for a little while. The deal will help Ford produce a lot more chips for its vehicles, and hopefully a lot more chips for the rest of the world and other companies' vehicles as well. And in case you missed it, just about everything in the world right now now is in short supply, and that includes some electronics like our chips. In a nutshell, at the start of the pandemic, all the way back in March of 2020, a lot of industries started to shut down. Now, a lot of industries started to shut down in the United States, but they also started to shut down across the world as well. So a lot of these companies weren't producing the technical measures that help our electronics run. One of those major things is chips. Specifically, these are microchips, and they power everything from our laptops and computers to our cars. Essentially, these chips are the brains or command centers of our electronics. And without them, our electronics simply cannot work. But a slowdown in production was not the only problem. When the pandemic was first getting started, a lot of people started to transition from working in the office to working at home. This meant that they needed electronics like laptops and computers and sometimes phones in order to do their jobs effectively. And you had millions of kids around the world who were in the same boat. They couldn't go to school anymore, so they transitioned to online learning. And that means that they're going to need at least laptops. So when manufacturing stopped, things got behind. And even though it has now picked back up, suppliers can't really keep up with demand. Not only that, we're having outbreaks of COVID in a lot of these countries where our chips are made. Factories are continuously having to shut down. And not only that, we have some massive supply chain issues throughout the world that is delaying a lot of our shipments. That means that these chips can't even make it to the United States to be put into your electronics. And according to our Market Briefs newsletter, around 37% of all of these semiconductor microchips were produced and manufactured in the United States, or at least they used to be. As of 2021, only around 12% of semiconductor microchips are produced in the United States. This has led to semiconductor companies who specifically make these microchips to invest around $3.7 billion into the industry that can hopefully up production and get more chips out to suppliers. Suppliers like Ford. Ford is starting to invest its own money into creating some of these microchips. Not only will this help them today, but it can possibly help prevent this issue in the future. Earlier this year, Ford and some of the other major automakers around the world announced that they're going to be producing a lot less vehicles. This is because of the global chip shortage. Like I said before, these semiconductor microchips are essentially the brains of our electronics. And a lot of our newer vehicles have a ton of electronic components. So without the microchips, these companies can't produce new vehicles. And if they can't produce new vehicles, well, then they're going to have to slash production. We saw a lot of these companies do that, and essentially they're taking a massive hit in revenue because of it. Now, I will say that there are companies that are investing billions of dollars into bringing microchip production to the United States. Companies like Texas Instruments, Intel, and NVIDIA. And things have gotten so bad that the United States government even decided to step in in October of 2021. The Senate initially passed a bill that would give around $52 billion in funding for the microchips industry. But it was almost immediately overshadowed by the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill that Joe Biden and his administration were pushing. Now that the infrastructure bill has passed though, Congress may begin talks again on this microchips bill. But in the meantime, just this one small problem is hurting just about every industry that you can think of. Apple said that it's slashing its production of the iPhone 13 by as much as 10 million units due to the microchip shortage. And the world's largest automaker, Toyota, said that it was also slashing its production of vehicles by around 15%, and it'll start in November of 2021. And since the shortage has begun, the auto industry has lost a combined $210 billion. And this really affects everyone, because if these big tech companies and automakers start slashing production even more in 2022, that means your products are going to cost even more. This is all just an issue of supply and demand. 
These semiconductors are in fewer supply. That means these companies are going to have to pay more in order to get them, or they're going to have to invest billions of dollars into producing them themselves. So what does that mean? Well, that means the next time you go to buy an iPhone, if you try to buy a new vehicle, it's going to cost you way more than it would even just two years ago. This is just basic supply and demand. There is a huge demand for iPhones and new vehicles. However, there's not really that many on the market. That means companies are going to have to raise prices in order to cut costs. So that hurts you as a consumer. On the flip side though, if these companies continue to lose money and the consumers can't buy these products, then they're also going to have to slash and cut somewhere else. First thing to go usually is jobs. Companies will cut jobs in order to cut costs and we're already in a labor shortage, which may make the price of things go up even further. So nobody really knows what's going to go on with this global chip shortage in 2022. However, a lot of businesses have started to take that first step and initiative to hopefully increase production. And that's a great first step, but it costs a lot of money to do that. So in the future, we'll start to see a lot more chips, which is going to be important in our society because day by day, our world is getting even more tech focused. So sometimes having those electronics is going to be a necessity and not just a want. Before we move on to our next main story, let's take a quick break to talk about today's sponsor, Policy Genius. You can now stop stressing about life insurance because Policy Genius will do all of the work for you. All you need to do is just enter a few pieces of information and Policy Genius will sift through hundreds, if not thousands of different policies on your behalf and then they will present the best options for you so that way you can get the one that works for your plan and saves you a ton of money. Oh, and what's even better is they do not charge any extra fees just for working with them. So that way you can focus on learning, comparing, and applying. When you learn with Policy Genius, you'll find out everything you wanted or never wanted to know about life insurance. Next up, you can compare insurance quotes to make sure you're getting the best option and saving the most money. Next up, just sit back, relax, and apply. Their service is super easy to use and completely free of charge. Like I said, working and finding a quote with Policy Genius is completely free. That means it doesn't cost you a penny. So if you wanna learn more about Policy Genius and see what they can offer you, I'll leave a link in the description below on exactly how you can do that. Big shout out to Policy Genius for sponsoring this video. And now back to the news. As the holiday season starts to pick up here, it looks like shoppers are beginning to return to retail locations, but maybe not physically. In its recent earnings report, Kohl's increased its sales by around 16% last quarter. But a lot of its sales were online driven, as a ton of retail locations have struggled over the last year and a half to get customers into their brick and mortar locations. For instance, Macy's is closing 60 of its brick and mortar stores between now and 2023. And honestly, this is nothing new for retail. Brick and mortar locations have been struggling for a long time now. Like I said in the last story, our world is becoming a lot more tech focused. That means online too. But the pandemic really amplified a lot of these problems. Most of these retail brick and mortar stores were completely closed for months in 2020 and in parts of 2021 due to social distancing orders. The economy went into an economic lockdown. So that meant that not only were people not able to shop at these stores, but employees couldn't work at them either. That meant that a lot of these retail workers went out and found new jobs. So when stores eventually did open back up, there was no one to fill those positions and those stores immediately struggled. And when consumers started to enter stores again, they started to have bad experiences. Couple that with our supply chain issues and now you've got a retail problem that is exploding in 2022. But like I said, Kohl's and other retailers are doing just fine. They're starting to realize that just because they're not offering in-store items doesn't mean they can't be successful. So ultimately what this might mean is the death of brick and mortar retail locations. Kohl's and Macy, JCPenney, and a ton of these other traditional retailers might shift all of their money and time into online models. And even though Macy's is closing locations, they're actually doing pretty well right now. Just yesterday, their stock was up by over 21% 
This is because their digital stores are booming, but nobody is going to these brick and mortar locations anymore. And we've seen this as malls have continued to close throughout the United States. A long time ago, 50, 60 years ago, when malls were first coming out, they were the big thing. Malls made shopping more efficient. Now you had a ton of different stores all under one roof. Instead of going from store to store to store, you could get all of your shopping done and you only needed to go to one place. In addition, a lot of them had food courts, so you could shop and then eat and then go right back to shopping. That was the convenience of the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Nowadays though, Americans can find all of those companies online. So now they don't even have to leave their house in order to get all of the same things. This has ultimately led to the death of malls. And a lot of these traditional retail locations are either within a mall or very close to one. And they are massively struggling because of it. So what we ultimately will see is a lot of these traditional retailers start to scale down. Scaling down means smaller stores and fewer employees, so they can still offer that brick and mortar experience to customers that want it, but for the most part, these are going to be few and far between. That will hopefully cut their operational costs and the rest of their money will come from digital sales. So don't be surprised within the next decade if there are hardly any traditional retail brick and mortar stores left in America. But let me know your thoughts on the retail and semiconductor issue. Do you think that traditional brick and mortar locations are dying or do you think that eventually people will want these and they'll start to make a comeback? In addition, how long do you think that this semiconductor issue is going to last? Do you think we'll start to see production boom soon or is this semiconductor shortage here to stay? Whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment below before you go. But that is it for today's Market Briefs video breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Keep hustling money minds, and I'll see you all in the next one.